Lieutenant Lewis Puller was only 23. Booby traps, snares, and other terrible things that lurk in the jungle. Let's go. We've just run into some D.C. here in the area. Right immediately to our front is a group of huts. Now this footage looks like around 1968. Everybody's still carrying the M14s. They'll show some Marines clearing some area, finding assortments of booby traps. And yes, that was Chesty Puller's son, who was injured after three months in Vietnam. We'll get more into that. The edge of a small village, getting some return fire. One day while on patrol, a booby-trapped howitzer shell exploded at Puller's feet. I had no idea that the pink mist that engulfed me had been caused by the vaporization of most of my right and left legs and most of his left hand. It wasn't an accident. They were trying to kill me. Lewis Puller should have died then, but a quick evacuation and intensive medical care saved his life. So you can see what happened to Chesty Puller Jr., that young second lieutenant was in Vietnam for three months. He ended up going on to be a lawyer and author, and then after his book was famous, committed suicide. So these booby traps can consist of all sorts of things, as we've seen, to include buried ordnance, buried landmines, our buried ordnance. Let's keep going. These Viet Cong are elusive. You can't see them. All you can do is hear the bullets as they come at you. They just moved out on a line to assault this position. Hitting it with everything they've got. Now look at that assault. It reminds me of the British during the Revolutionary War on one line. Everybody's standing erect straight up. Elephant grass is very little cover, obviously. Oh, clean them out. For every patrol, of course, the way is strung with danger. And only constant vigilance can turn up the vicious array of often primitive, but surprisingly effective booby traps and obstacles with which the crafty enemy has popped the green earth. Every cave must be thoroughly and cautiously explored. Even a youngster plodding along the road could have a grenade concealed in the heavy burden. It has happened before. So take a look at the technology there. They have metal detectors like you'd see an old man at the beach with. You really have to trust in that equipment. Think about it. Picture this for a second. You're in Vietnam. You've got an old metal detector with earphones on listening for a beep. The beep could be old spent casings. could be part of farm equipment. So you'd be picking stuff up, pick a thousand pieces up. You ignore one. Bam. Or you just don't sweep the right area. So you really have to trust your minesweepers. Patrol must wait until the road itself is swept with mine detectors. When it moves on, it finds the spider holes in which snipers have been or may still be hiding. The patrol search turns up punji pits filled with needle-sharp bamboo sticks. And sprouting everywhere are the bamboo spears the Marines call Victor Charlie toothpicks, sharp enough to pierce a boot often smeared with crude voice. Now, for those of you that have never messed with bamboo, it's surprisingly strong and can get surprisingly sharp. So you think about bamboo, like you think of a normal stick or a twig, you think, well, it's going to break. It's not going to have enough strength to hold up as you go into it. And lots of guys would get injured. And that was the thing, injured. Well, these type of things, and the Vietnamese took up what the Japanese did during World War II, the object was not to kill as much as it was to maim. Why? Because it takes a lot more personnel to deal with somebody maimed. And when somebody's dead, people tend to move on faster. Now you got to get the injured person, three or four people, get them into a helicopter, evacuated, taken care of. It's more resource consuming. And that's where the punji pits, the strategy was. Handmade explosives are set to detonate at the slightest tug on a tripwire. Yes, every foot of the way is strong with danger. 
You always hear, even in boot camp, about not leaving anything laying around. Police up your stuff, right? The point there is, you see in Vietnam, the supply lines for the Vietnamese weren't as effective as ours. They had their methods, but most of it was by ground, either by foot or by truck when they could use the Ho Chi Minh Trail. So they would use a lot of our old ordnance, unexploded ordnance. Anything left behind could be used for a booby trap. Look who we've got, Sal. We got maps. This is important. This. Now that may be the last war we see with people with fixed bayonets. You just notice that an M14 with a fixed bayonet. Now you've got a four foot and change long weapon to tote around. Now look at that contraption. Reminds me of something out of the first Rambo or a Saw movie. I wouldn't want to run into that thing at night because those things, once you get into it, it's going to hang up your web gear, your rifle sling, everything else it gets stuck to. Bullets rip through the leaves and the Marine is hit. Then the Navy hospital corpsman who called to help him is also wounded. You know, so the booby traps are not only to capture the one guy, you also hear somebody screaming, in this case an explosion. And you know right where your enemy is, so it's somewhat of a signaling device as well as injuring device. Rifleman push forward. In the tree lines and along the bank of the nearby stream, the patrol uncovers a complicated network of trenches and tunnels. After a careful probing, Marine combat engineers are called forward to destroy the enemy fortifications. Now we still see something very similar today used with that way the front is in a triangular shape. They have it f way further out because the ordnance is more intense. But I can't imagine hitting a bomb, even if your sweeper went through in advance. I'm sure these guys hit plenty of things. And as we all know, when a track vehicle gets down, it's a big pain in the ass to fix, no less in mud. Getting there in a rice paddy. So you find the tunnel, right? You don't know how big the tunnel system is. You blow it. But if you've seen these tunnel systems, these guys are very smart. They're very complex. It's not like you stop one entrance or exit. It eliminates the whole tunnel. There's several of them. Hard to find. Who wants to go down in the tunnel and figure out where it begins and ends? Colonel Dickey's patrol in force has accomplished its mission. Search and destroy. There are no young VCs. We have Vietnamese nationals who do the interrogating, asking where the VC are, where they may have gone. It's always a slippery slope. You're asking where the VC is. Perhaps there was a bombing run that burned some crops, ruined a rice paddy. Now all of a sudden you're saying, hey, get on our side. We had the same thing in the desert. You may destroy something of value to a farmer who cares less about the war, and all of a sudden now they give a shit because you ruin their livelihood. It's the same thing here. When you get into these operations where there's no clear enemy, and since Korea, we haven't had one a real clear enemy. I guess Desert Storm, the Iraqis wore uniforms until they decided to switch over to civilian clothes and then surrender, but ultimately, I think in the future, conventional warfare where the bad guy dresses up in a uniform who you can identify. Seems like it's gone by the wayside. We're looking for tunnels, caves, 
anything where the Viet Cong may hide. His own guerrilla tactics are being turned against him, and he is frequently trapped in our ambushes, set up by the patrols that are moving constantly. Backed up by an expansive civic action program, continues to win the trust of the people in Vietnam. Many well, continues to win the trust of the people in Vietnam. It's hard to believe, no matter who you are, if you go to someone else's country, fighting a war with a third party, that they're going to love you. Now, what would be the most terrifying surprise event? A booby trap, a snare, you step on a landmine that you don't realize, and there's an attack from the jungle when you can never see the enemy? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.